Hello reformers and welcome back to a special feature of A World of Ice and Fire. So yeah, there has been a patch for this. I did update and as a result it was not save game compatible. So that's a bit of a shame obviously, but doesn't really matter too much because it's now obviously time to show off some of the more advanced mechanics in the game. Obviously, I'm not going to be delving too deep into the town management and things like that, unless we can actually get a town and own it. Now, obviously, we're here in the Iron Islands. I thought I would return to old school tactics because way back in, I believe, A Clash of Kings, what was it now? 1.2, I think? A Clash of Kings 1.2 or 2.1 or I don't even know, something like that. I started a faction in the Iron Islands and it was amazing because many of the sieges here were so unique, so so good that I thought okay we're gonna do that with this mod as well and we're gonna see how it goes. Now I've taken a look at the troop trees of the Iron Islands and if we... Uh, I always forget that it's actually here and not in under reports but yes Let's just go and take a look at the Iron Islands real quick. As you can see here, their finger dancers are actually pretty decent, as well as their Ironborn Marauders. Their warriors are actually pretty nice too. Their Marauders are the ones that we kind of have to look out for, but their finger dancers are actually pretty harsh because they are Throne Weapon Specialists, and as we know, Throne Weapon Specialists are kind of my bane. So, as you see here, this guy actually has 37 Ironborn Marauders. That is a lot of high tier units, but I've done a little bit of, you know, a little bit of leveling up myself. Just ignore Elias' stats right now. He went into an alternate dimension, gained a lifetime of experience, and basically came back to our planet and was like, Behold, mortals, I have returned. And, and there he is, and he said, I see, as well because obviously that's his thing. Anyway, as you can see here, we have a bunch of different units. One of these hardened... Hardened? No. One of these Northern Horsemen actually did get knocked unconscious because we were fighting that poacher band. And that's the one that wanted to retrieve the Raven, if you recall, in the previous episode. And he got knocked unconscious, and these guys are, in my opinion, really, really bad. If you take a look at the troop tree here, they do become Northern Cavalry, of course, and Northern Cavalry are, in my opinion, very good. I, I, oh, you can't actually even click on these. Well, that's a, that's a bit unfortunate. Okay, so let's just go here real quick. Yes, we're going to get to the fighting very, very soon. Just wait. Now, yes, as you see here, the horsemen only start with a sword. They only start with a sword. They don't really have very good anything. I mean, their proficiencies are okay. I mean, one-handed is the only thing that they need to worry about, really. Their hit points are okay as well. But let's just take a look at his inventory. No, nope, he does not come with a shield. He does not come with a shield. So that's the main reason why the Northern Cavalry are better in every single respect. Because they do come with a shield. If, you know, the Horsemen came with a shield, then I'd be like, oh yeah, it's absolutely fine to have an army of those. But as it stands, I've had to level these guys up because we need the shields. So anyway, let's go in and fight this guy. He actually did give me... A pretty nice greeting and I'm sure he's he's not very nice he's not very he's, he's not very nice no he is actually very nice but he is not going to like us very very soon so I'm here to deliver you my demands uh, okay so here we go yes so we lose some reputation and we now are at war against them and we're going to be trying our best let's take a look at the commander's options real quick ah, I'm passion your men with a rousing speech Call your enemy forward for Jewel of Honor. There seems to be no one willing to duel. What about Impassion Your Men? Yes, good speech. Good speech, and we gain two morale from that, yes. So that's rather amusing. Anyway, we can now head in and see what kind of battle we have for us. Oh yes, it's also giving me that tutorial again because I've technically not actually been in a battle yet because I auto-resolved the poacher battle, so there is that. Also... It seems like, as you can see down in the bottom right there, there is a percentage associated with your shield durability. And I personally feel like that is, even though that's a minor thing, you, you would think that most mods would have that. But no, no, most mods do not have that. And it is extremely, extremely useful. So, let's see what I can do here. Okay, so advanced formations. Uh, yes. 
Yes, thank you. Okay, we're gonna go for wedge, I think. Yeah, I've gotta, gotta kinda bend down because my microphone is in the way, so I have to sort of crane my neck a little bit to see what's going on with the F keys, because I don't wanna mistakenly do something that is going to either minimize the game or something terrible like that. Yeah, it's happened before. It has happened before, yes. Don't worry about that. Okay, so shield wall, I believe, is going to be good for our infantry here. Going to get those in the front. And we're going to use a couple of tactics. Oh, yes. Tactics. Can you believe it? Oh, strategy and all kinds of things. Is an archer division and cannot form ranks. You can't form ranks as an archer division? What? I was able to do that before. Oh, well, that's a bit strange. Okay, so spearmen. Oh, yeah, we also have spearmen here as well. So I suppose I should just use the spearmen in ranks instead. There we go. And we're going to just give them... You know, a little bit of extra space between them and the archers. Oh yeah, I should probably also mention that these archers are Night's Watch units. Yeah, so if you are a big fan of the Night's Watch from the show or the books or whatever, then it is probably highly advisable for you to get some of these. They are elite rangers and let me just say their stats are insane i mean we can take a look at those stats after this but obviously we're just kind of getting ready to attack and how many oh okay so we have 135 on the fields of battle and he has 135 as far as i'm aware the ironborn or shall we say the iron islands vassals do not have archers as far as i'm aware i think they primarily have only thrown weapons so I think I can probably move my infantry forward and we can then see if they decide to yep no they mostly have thrown weapons as you can see here yes oh very nice thank you yes I'm not particularly happy about that they do have quite a few pole arms as well which is not very nice okay so I'm gonna tell my spearmen because I'm not particularly I don't really care about our spearmen that much I know that seems rather callous but I kind of recruited them by mistake, and they don't really have the best stats or anything like that. So what I'm trying to do is just kind of get around here. I'm going to tell our infantry to charge in as well. It seems like there's an animation when you do the charge thing, which I'm not particularly happy about. I'm going to tell our archers to charge in as well because uh, it, we kind of need to, you know. I think I'm actually going to disable that. Yes. I think I'm going to disable that as soon as I can because it seems like it's absolutely pointless. Ooh, critical. Look at that critical damage. Yeah. So you should also know that Elias, apart from having 10 in every single skill with the exception of trade, apart from that, he is an absolutely combat genius, although I'm not. So yeah, he's probably, I don't know. I don't know whether we're going to die or anything like that. But yeah, just, just bear in mind that I'm not very good in terms of my own skill, but Elias is absolutely insane. He's only level 4, by the way, so that's the reason why he went into that alternate dimension. You could say that he was abducted by aliens or something, and they gave him a huge amount of knowledge and all sorts of, all manner of things, but yes, whatever you want to say, he has returned, and he is ready to form House Mormont once again. And we are going to obviously be the reaper of crow's nest if we can obviously that's quite far away from here right now and i'm quite a bit worried about how many units actually are using throne weapons right here but well what can you do yeah so oh yeah also this mace i found this mace and i was like oh this is a very nice mace because as we all know blunt weapons you know they're very good against heavy armor and everything and personally i don't think they're actually bad against any armor type i think they're actually really really good against everything almost and i mean that's the thing it doesn't really matter whether a blunt weapon in my opinion does a little bit less damage to say cloth armor or mail armor or anything like that because in general it's going to be dealing super amounts of damage anyway so even if it does, let's say it just does 70 instead of 270. 70 is still an amazing amount of damage, so it doesn't really matter either way. As you can see, we're dealing so much damage. They, they, it could be the reason because he has 700 in every single proficiency. That could be it. And also the fact that he has a lot in strength and a lot in power strike as well. But yes, let's not get into that. The main reason why I did that is, of course, because we must be able to survive our upcoming siege here. 
And hilarious enough that we only lost three units. I'm actually really surprised about that. Seems like our surgery skill is actually doing a pretty reasonable job of things because usually surgery doesn't actually help me that much in other mods. So it seems like maybe we have a little bit of a, a change, perhaps. Maybe it's, maybe it's given us a little bit more. Okay, so let's bury the dead and, you know, do all of that stuff. And we're gaining a helmet here. As you can see, I've actually bought some pretty decent gear as well just to show you what is out there. Now, I actually had to travel to Volantis to find this particular torso armor. And it's a little bit weird because I'm not entirely sure why Volantis would have this kind of armor when, for example, the Weeping Town does not have that kind of armor. It's very, very strange. Also, the helm was quite difficult to find too. The gloves, I don't, I don't, even, don't even tell me. And also arch, uh, archers, no, arrows. Arrows are also very, very difficult to find in this mod. I'm not entirely sure why, but they are. So there you go. All right, so we are now ready to tackle the 10 towers. And we're probably going to, uh, should we just, okay. So I think I'm probably, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm just going to show you the stats actually of the Night's Watch because they are amazing and I actually remembered to do it this time but yes as you can see look at this 30 agility 24 strength all of these proficiencies at 270 they don't really have that much power draw but it doesn't really matter I don't think because they're just amazing they're really really good and then I should mention also the Veil Knight of the Gate yeah this I don't believe is actually on the troop tree if you actually take a look at the uh Okay, let me uh, let me just go to the actual troop tree. I don't think it is actually on the troop tree. Oh, no, it is. Oh, okay, never mind. I thought it was like, like a, a secret lordly unit that you didn't actually have access to until you fully upgraded one of the other knights or something like that. But no, no, I was <laughs> a little bit incorrect there. Anyway, what we're going to do is going to wait here for some time. Maybe the enemies are going to come to us, but it doesn't really matter because we are going to besiege it. Plan your siege. Okay, so here we go. Very classic in terms of the Britainwalder style of doing sieges and things. So, order the construction of sanitation. It's going to take two hours because obviously we have an engineering skill of an absolutely insane amount. So, it's only going to take a little bit of time. Obviously, this is just to expedite the fact that I want to get this done as quickly as possible. But what else should we do? Build defenses, infiltrate, and attempt to investigate. No, I don't really see the necessity for that. Loot and destroy crops and farms nearby. No, I don't really see the necessity for that either. Build defenses. It's going to take 20 hours. Prevents enemy skirmishes. Okay, well, why not? Let's try it. 20 hours. I don't know how long it's going to take, actually, for us to even be able to launch an attack. So, 20 hours is not that much. Maybe the vassals are going to turn up. If they do decide to turn up, then obviously we'll deal with them however we see fit. But as it stands, there you go. Some men have died of cold, flu, and other illnesses. No. No, they haven't. They haven't. Thank you very much. There's no casualties there. Okay, so have we done that? I think we may have done that. Okay, make preparations. So, let's see. Build a siege tower? No, not a siege tower. Oh. Oh, dear. Okay, we might have to do that. Oh, it's only going to take six hours. Okay. Well, that's absolutely fine. Uh-oh. Sir, bad news. One of our men has deserted to the enemy. It may be because of his low morale or because they have offered him money. Whatever it is, the enemy will know our plans. Hmm. Okay, well, ra let's ra let's raise morale, shall we? Just a little bit. Yeah, we're gaining... We're, yes. The wages are actually very, very fair. Because if you think about a mod like A Clash of Kings or Prophecy of Pendor or, you know, Perizno perhaps, then every single unit has some really, really high wages when you get them to high tiers. And you'd be paying, I don't know, 15,000, 20,000, maybe even more than that, dependent on the mod. And this mod, I have really high tier units. I mean, obviously they're not all high tier. And if they were all high tier, then I, I suppose it would probably go up to about 15,000. But the wages are very, very fair in that regard. So, yeah, if you're, you know, wanting to find out about that, then obviously I've just I've just told you. So that's all good. Order the Vanguard to use Mount Let's and prepare to charge with the main army under your command. Okay, so we lost 17 and we eliminated 23. Yes, all right, the hour has arrived. Let's do it. All right, let's go. I don't know what kind of thing I'm going to be expecting here, 
but I know that they're probably going to be giving us a really, really good fight. So I'm going to tell everyone to chop. Yeah, I very much don't appreciate this animation, I gotta say. It completely makes you, well, immobile. It completely stops you from doing anything. And sometimes you need to change whether your units are charge charging at a moment's notice. And sometimes you have to do it multiple times to archers and to cavalry and to things like that. So, you know, if your infantry is holding position and then you do it to the archers and the cavalry, then obviously you have to do it twice. And then you have that animation play twice and you have the sounds and all that sort of thing, which I don't really mind. I think that that's actually a pretty decent idea for realism's sake. But in general, I feel as though it is mm, maybe a little bit sort of sacrificing the usability and sort of the accessibility of moving around and being able to sort of command your units how you, how you wish without having some problems. That guy just threw a rock at me. Did you see that? That guy just threw a rock. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay, well, let's just deal our damage here. Okay, yeah, I'm going to have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so... Wow, this is a pretty big... Pretty big castle. And I'm a bit worried about it, to be honest. Okay, come on, take that guy out. Thank you very much. I love this mace. i got to say, if any of you are playing this, then try and find this mace. I mean, I can't even remember where I found it, actually. But I think it was in the... In the Stormlands area, I think, maybe? I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to show you what it... Oh, no. Oh, no. It's the weapon damage. The weapon damage in this mod. Oh, no. I am I absolutely loathe that system. Oh, dear. Well, yes. Yeah, so let's, let's actually just hope that we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I do have a bow as well, by the way, so I can use that. Obviously, it's not particularly good, as you can see. I mean, I'm using a short bow. But it is one of the better short bows, and this guy has a shield, so it's highly unlikely I'll be able to do anything to him. Maybe I can try and take out some of the axe throwers or something? It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case anytime soon, does it? Maybe I can shoot their legs. No? No? Okay, yeah. Just seems like the shield is going to be blocking it, but... Anyway, yeah, as you can see, uh, they do have that weapon damage system. I am very much an advocate against weapon damage. I mean, yes, okay, okay. Realism, okay? So the realism is going to be there. That's absolutely fine. You know, I don't mind weapons breaking after, I don't know, 200 battles. I don't know, 100 battles. Let's, let's just say, let's just say 100 battles. And I don't mind a weapon like a spear or something or a lance getting destroyed after 10 battles or 15 or something like that. But I've literally just bought this mace. And I very much hope that we will not have it be destroyed. Wow, all of our units are actually having a really bad time of things here. I'm not, not particularly happy about that, i got to say. But how many units do we actually have to fight? I mean, not many. We only have to fight about 150, so we should, in theory, have this in the bag. I mean, Elias is just an absolute beast when it comes to, you know, attacking here. And also, there is a shield bash mechanic as well, so I really, really like that. As you can see... What?! Okay, so yeah, there's also injuries, and I've just lost a minus one charisma. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and hello there. There seems to be a lot of you. Okay, so where are all of my units, by the way? It seems like we have been unable to send in most of our units. I'm not entirely sure where they all are. Where are they all? That is very strange. Okay, I, I guess we're just going to have to retreat. There's not much more we can do. I mean, there's... We barely have any people here, and I lost minus one charisma, which is not exactly great, is it? So, make preparations for your sort. I have to build another siege tower? Okay, I gotta say, I'm not very impressed with... Yeah, okay, food for 16 days. And 117 defenders, wow, okay. Yeah, I'm not particularly impressed with the siege mechanics so far. But let's just build another siege tower and go back in and see whether that changes. Alright, so I think it is about time that we explore some more of our options here, and that's the thing. This is the kind of the reason why I'm not a big fan of the Britain Order style of doing things, and primarily also the reason why I was not a big fan of Viking Conquest. Now, initially, I think that Viking Conquest, or at least I thought, was a really, really nice addition to Warband, but because it obviously married you know, sort of Viking-style lore and all that sort of thing. 
with the Brit and Water siege mechanics and you know the wound system and the stamina and all that sort of thing and i think you've actually noticed that i've turned that off by now but there's still the wound system and you have to obviously go to a healer and have all of that you know done and and wrapped up and completed and all that sort of thing so basically what we're going to be doing now is we're going to try and find a traitor within the castle's defenses and i don't actually know what this is going to do because i don't think i've ever done this but we're going to see, actually. I think it might be quite nice. Right. Okay, so we lost one. <laughs> yeah, we lost one. That's absolutely fine. No problem at all. But, yeah, this is the main reason why I'm not a big fan of the Britain Water style of doing things. And the reason for that, yeah, you know why. It's because when you're doing a siege like this, in general, it is just so much more effective to just wait for those 20 or so days until they run out of food because as you've seen if I go in and actually you know assault it then obviously I'm going in with a vanguard vanguard is a small force and I'm not going in with my entire army which in theory should have been the way it went but anyway ah uh, without news no one is willing to turn coat oh okay infiltrate the castle's defenses all right so let's do that let's try and infiltrate the castle's defenses and do some damage now what's amusing about this as well is that Every single time you do this, you have a very high chance if the AI was actually willing to attack me. But the point is, is that if you were trying to, let's say, create your own faction, and like we're trying to do here, and you had a much smaller army than we do now, then in theory, you would be attacked almost constantly. And obviously, because, you know, the only reason we're not actually having too many casualties, with the exception of, you know, obviously just luck, I suppose is because we have, you know, a pretty reasonable amount of skills. I mean, as you've seen, we have 10 in basically everything that matters. So anyway, quickly, I want to send a detachment of men to reinforce the walls while I make a threat of assault, hopefully forcing them to withdraw. Okay, did that work? Yep, it kind of did. Okay, so we must begin to build more defenses. Okay, so apparently we're building more defenses right now. But yeah, as you could see, we're actually, I hope, dealing some damage to the enemy and as you can see uh, uh, oh, there you go so we actually okay okay so i see what they're trying to do here and that's all very well and good obviously i played britain water a very very long time ago and perhaps some of the you know mechanics surrounding sieges has been refined somewhat because at the time i was really not very much appreciating it because you know, wound system, the bleeding system, and in general having all of these options and not really any way to... Oh, I have to build the fences apparently again. Well, that's not very nice. But yeah, as you can see, 10 more days. And if I want to, I can loot and destroy crops and farms nearby, which is obviously... What that's going to do is reduce food even further, I think. I'm actually unsure about that, but let's just see whether that is actually the case. Because it seems like the way that the game wants or, or shall we say in this in this respect the mod wants you to play is as you can see to have a, a, a war of attrition basically that's what they want you to do shall we call for a meeting with the castle commander yeah there you go they actually don't even have that many units in here any further and there you go so they're just going to be giving up the ghost as it were and we're going to be able to take this no problem at all so see now that's the thing i i don't mind that i don't mind the way that they've done it but it's i don't know it just doesn't seem very enjoyable to me because we're basically only on the world map aren't we we're only on the world map and as a result it basically means that we are well, we're playing a, basically a strategy game, you know, and yes, yes, okay, Mount of Blade is kind of a strategy game, but in my opinion, it's much more of an RPG slash combat slash simulation kind of game rather than a strategy game. Yes, okay, there are strategy elements, but in general, I feel like the strategy elements are quite minor in comparison. So what this is doing is it is, in my opinion, making it so that we have much more of a, shall we say, you know, strategy focus. And, and yeah, that's absolutely fine. That is absolutely fine. I have no problem with that at all. Because in general, I think that that is a pretty fun way to do things. But in this case, I'm not entirely sure. 
because as you can see here, I mean, this is all we have in terms of castle improvements. And now I know there are other mods that will do things a little bit differently. They'll give you, I don't know, 10 things to build. And yeah, that might be a bit overkill, but I like to have quite a few options. You know, having some options would be quite nice. Anyway, as you can see here, we have a wide variety of vassals. Now, for some reason, attacking us, which I find rather amusing in itself, because they didn't attack us before. And now they're all attacking us because we've taken something. So yes, House Mormont is probably going to have a very short-lived existence. And I'd actually like to do something real quick. As you can see, I have player damage on half. But that's basically it. Battle size is on 300 and everything. And otherwise, I've just gone... I've gone for hardcore combat AI, by the way, as well. Because I personally feel like that, that that is pretty fun. And let's just have a look here. Wait a minute. I want to go over here. Okay, that doesn't seem to do anything. Right. So I was trying, if at all, to find... Uh, what was I trying to find now? I was trying to find something in particular, but now I can't remember what it was. Ah, uh, never mind. Okay. It seems like we're just going to have to, you know, sort of grin and bear this, but let's just see what we're going to be greeted with. Is there the bear? No, there's the bear. Thank you very much. Yep, there we go. But, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I, I, I don't mind them attacking, obviously. Oh, they decided to run away. Right. Okay, well, that's, that's very strange. Okay, well, never mind. Oh, it seems... Oh, all right. So, in the name of King Joffrey Baratheon, state your business and don't try and fool us peasants. We saw you sneak out of the gates. <laughs> oh, don't try and fool us peasants. Yes. Okay, so... Let, uh, I watch your men butcher those loyal. I will avenge those slain and you will pay with your blood. There you go. So, yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> there was a slight story element outside and obviously because the world of ice and fire is very very much based on story and based on doing quests and running around and doing all of that sort of thing and this episode of the special feature is just focused on the siege mechanics and the advanced sort of things that you can do at a higher sort of level we are literally just going to be focusing on that obviously and if i do end up creating a full series of this which is Maybe likely. I don't. I'm not. I'm not really convinced at the moment. I like how they have made it much more focused on story, but I don't really like how they've based it on the Britain Water engine, or not the engine, but you know what I mean. The Britain Water style of doing things. I'm not very, uh, not a big fan of that. And that's nothing against Britain Water, by the way. I actually really enjoyed Britain Water when I was playing it, but. In general, it I, I feel like it makes things much harder than they have to be. And yeah, okay, that that you know you could say that that's realism, and that's absolutely fine. I have no problem with having a little bit of realism here and there, but for the most part, I feel like the realism gets in the way, and it makes things a lot less enjoyable as a result. Which is actually a bit of a shame because I feel like some realistic settings, you know, with the exception of, I mean, I think the stumbling is actually pretty amusing. And I think that's very funny, but I wouldn't say that that's realistic, because if you think about it, I mean, what trained warrior is going to be like, oh, let me just stumble, but, you know, over my own feet. I'm not that clumsy, am I? Yeah, so th there's also that to take into account, obviously. That's not very realistic. So if they were going for realism, then obviously that's, you know, that's not particularly realistic. I do know, obviously, that you can reduce the chance of you stumbling with agility, as far as I'm aware. And yeah, that that's fine, because obviously with agility you're going to, you know, stumble less because you're more agile. Obviously that makes sense. But for the most part, I feel like the realism, as I say, does get in the way. And this is kind of like my final thoughts on the mod in general. It's kind of, see that's the thing, I'm trying to sort of refine the way that I do these special features. And hopefully it has been relatively enjoyable for most of you. And I'm going to... Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah, let's be a little bit careful here. As you can see, we're quite outnumbered. <laughs> yes, we are quite outnumbered, as you can see. Uh, th now, this is this is also the annoying thing. The story, as I was going to mention, the story NPCs that were right outside waiting for us were the ones to get us in combat here. They got us in combat against an overwhelming force 
And that is the main reason why we're having some problems here. So let's actually just get our archers, put them in a nice position. And we're going to hopefully get them to attack. I don't really want them to go into melee, but apparently they're doing that anyway, which is not very nice. Anyway, yeah. So in general, my, my shall we say, rating or judgment on A World of Ice and Fire is a good one. With the exception of if you can deal with the Britain World of Game mechanics, then this is probably going to be something for you. I personally am not a big fan of those, as I've stated. You know, and it's nothing to do with this mod at all. I think that the mod does a very, very nice job of, well, just fully representing all of the different houses and the the territories and I think it's really quite nice because each faction seems to have quite an identity to them. So the North are obviously very much northern units, you know, they, they very much look exactly how you would expect northern units to look and obviously they do have a variety of different, you know, unit types. And yeah, okay, I think that maybe there could be a little bit more done on that. I'm not going to be too much of a nitpicker here, because I, I really hate that. I don't really like to nitpick, because in general, this is a fantastic work. And uh, yeah, they, I think the mod creators have done a really, really good job. And well, I'm who am I? Who am I to fault them over anything that I find personally objectionable? And there's, there's, not, there's not that much. There is not that much. But as I say, if you're... Wow, we actually won that? Oh, wow, okay. That was that was impressive. All right, but yes. Anyway, as I say, the siege mechanics, I actually don't really have too much of a problem with now that I've actually figured out what's going on with them because it seems like you have to do a variety of different options. You know those options that you get, you know, like send a spy in, you know, go behind enemy lines, do some damage, and so on and so forth. And if you have pretty decent units, don't know how much it really affects the outcome. I don't know whether it matters whether you have peasants or whether you have the, the highest tier unit, because obviously it's basically auto-resolving. So again, not entirely sure on that. But I think the main thing that I'm just a bit sad about is that I can't really do too much in the way of me going in there. You know, I can't really go like, oh yeah, let, let's just charge straight on in there and have some fun, you know, hitting people over the head with my mace and things like that. Yes, I can do that, but is it the most effective way of doing a siege? So, yeah, there's, there's that. So if you're not a big fan of, you know, maybe kind of like a Total War style, it's kind of, it's, it's not really Total War style, but it kind of is because it's more focused on being on the world map than it is actually going into actual fights, even though in Total War you do technically go into instances of battle and things like that. I'm not knocking Total War there, I'm just trying to say that it's much more of a strategy element than anything else. And then obviously you do have the wounds, so if you have a problem with the wounding systems, then obviously you're not really going to have a fun time there. But other than that, I think that the addition of the scripted events, the story, I think that is very strong. That is a very strong element. And if you are fully engrossed in either the books by George R. R. Martin or the TV show, of course, Game of Thrones, if you're engrossed in either of those things, then this mod is obviously 100% recommended because how can you, you know, how can you not want to experience the world as all of your favorite characters see it? So there is also that, and that is a, a very strong theme, shall we say. It's a very, very strong theme, especially with the story elements adding to it and all of that. So yeah, you know, overall, I think that the mod is very good. There are just slight nitpicking things that I don't really, you know, I don't really appreciate. And obviously the wound system is probably the biggest bugbear that I have because I literally got hit in the face and I lost minus one charisma for that. I think that's a, a way, way too harsh penalty for just getting hit once. And I'm sure most of you will actually agree about that. I think I actually heard some of you, you know, saying things about the, you know, the... Uh, the wound system, so there is that. And now, yeah, also the charge, the, the charge animation, which I have still failed to disable. Really needed to, do, yeah, really needed to do that. Anyway, it seems like we are going to be absolutely fine here. I guess it's literally just because I have some amazing units in the forms of the Stormlands House Guards, as well as the Veil vale Riders, and obviously Knights too. 
and yeah, I, I guess if I wanted to say something else, then I suppose some of the other factions, like for example the Iron Islands, they have some, in my opinion, really, really cool, unique units, because obviously they don't seem to have any cavalry, they don't seem to have any cavalry, and they don't have any ranged units in terms of using crossbows or archer, archer units, and that's really nice to me, because I like factions to have a unique feel to them, you know, so if you were to reference, for example, let's go all, let's go all the way back and reference native, for example. So if you reference native and you say, oh, so which faction do you like for crossbows? Well, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? That's obvious. The Rodox. The Rodox are the best for crossbows, with obviously Swadians coming in a sort of close second. Not really a close second, because the Rodox are actually extremely good with their crossbows. But anyway, point is, I feel like it could use obviously a bit more identity, but there are so many factions in the game and in, well, in the mods, technically, that you can't really you can't really fault them for that because there are so many and there are so many unique items. I mean, look at this. All of these items have been fashioned from scratch or you know from some other mod that they have you know taken assets from and things like that. There's also a horn here. You know, there's a horn and it improves leadership and tactic skills and also increases party morale. I mean, I've never seen that before in any other mod, so it's really really nice to have those small details. Also, I do find that the siege maps are very well detailed. They're very, very well detailed and very cool looking. And of course, they make things very, very difficult for the offensive force. And Pike is very, very difficult. No doubt. No doubt that is very difficult. So I think what we're probably going to do, uh, I challenge him to a duel. Sure. There you go. We gained some, gained some reputation. The har this harbour is too small and cannot transport a marshal and his whole army. Okay. Right. Okay, so... What? That is... Okay, so that, that might be a bit of a bugbear for me as well. Let's actually just see here real quick. I'm going to... Put in some archers here okay and now let's see if 183 is enough aha uh -huh. oh no oh no no that that okay all right so that's a bit of a problem i'm not entirely sure okay so what happened was okay way back when i you know first started this episode i came across by going to Hagsmire Harbor, and I came across with 283, 284 units. And it was no problem then, but apparently I now am unable to do that. And I have no way to get off this island unless I remove all of my units, or most of my units from the from the army. So oh, okay. That might have thrown a bit of a you know bit of a spanner in the works there. That's a bit that's a bit weird, isn't it? That is a bit weird. Maybe I need a boat. I do know that I, I do actually have a number of boats that I purchased, but I didn't see the necessity to use them really, so maybe that would make a difference. Maybe yeah, maybe bringing a boat along here and just, you know, sort of mooring it along the side here would make it make sense. And then you'd be able to you know, obviously participate in naval battles as well. So I hope that this has been a little bit informative, whether you want to download the mod or not. Obviously, I, I'm i pretty sure that if you're already into Game of Thrones, you've probably already played this. Or you've seen the first episode and you were just like, oh yes, I must have this. So if this has convinced you otherwise or has convinced you to download it, then that's great. And maybe, maybe some of you will also see my point of view with some of these, you know, some of the points that I've made. But anyway... I think that will be it for this series of special features for A World of Ice and Fire, and I am on the latest version, as I said, which is version 1.02, I believe. Anyway, the download link is in the description, so if you waited, you know, if you watched this long, then I applaud you. So yes, I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.